Workaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a dedicated spoiler free series review of The Keeper Chronicles by J.A. Andrews. The Keeper Chronicles consists of A Threat of Shadows, Pursuit of Shadows and Siege of Shadows. This is a self-published series which is the first series in a extended universe where there are other series. I actually read the first book for this series last year in I think it was April time and then I have finished books two and three of this series thus concluding it in January. I really liked this series. It actually grew on me as it went on and it's one of those that I really wish I had been read because it was just the the further in you get the more involved you get and I think it is just one of those that kind of like slowly but surely sucks you in. So I'm going to be going through this in my usual format where I'm going to give a brief synopsis and then I will discuss the characters, the plot and the world building. This series starts with a man named Alaric and Alaric used to be a keeper, one of the most respected pillars of his society. He had the ear of the queen and the respect of his peers. However he cast all of that aside because his wife is dying and she has very little time left. So he cast it aside so that he might be able to go search for a cure. But her time is growing short, so he must act fast. So when he hears of a wellstone which contains the magical properties that might actually be able to save his wife's life, he does not hesitate. However, as he gathers a group of companions along the way to go and find this magic, he begins to suspect that they have plans and intentions of their own. So therefore, can he trust in the companions he is journeying with? Meanwhile, news of an evil Dark Lord thought to be vanquished is in fact on the rise again. Can Alaric become the keeper he needs to be to be able to save his land and vanquish this Lord? Or will the darkness inside him be the end of all. Again, this was a series that in the first one I enjoyed. I had a good time. I had a good fun campy time. And then as the series went on, I just became more and more invested. It was a really fun series and I am so glad that I actually finally got around to finishing it. It was one of those that like, because I liked the first one, I didn't think I'd prioritize. And then I was just in the mood for something fun and I ended up completing the whole thing and it was great. The plot in this series is very much a kind of D&D &D style campaign. You know, it's just, we, we, we get the band together and we're gonna go get stuff done and you have like unlikely companions tropes and you end up also in further books you have things like found family you have almost like a magic school ish vibe going at one point as well and you just have so many wonderful fantasy tropes adapted to this world with these characters you have morally great characters you have corruption arcs you have redemption arcs and everything in between i had such a wonderful time just having fun with this series that's not something that I can say very often about fantasy. I read a lot of just very grim and miserable fantasy. If you look at my top 10 list you'll understand what I'm saying. I like authors that put their characters through shit. So then just every now and then having a break. I just read a series that I found particularly dense. I do have a dedicated series review for it if you want to check it out. But it was quite dense and it was quite harrowing. So then I was like I need something light. And I remembered the first book being light and I finished the last two and it was great. So as much as the plot of this is very much nothing that we've not seen before. It was done in a way that still felt very enticing and engaging and fresh and I still wanted to pick up the books which was great. As I said the first one I liked. It was a good time. Arguably probably like arc wise maybe one of the better books in the series but it wasn't until the second book that I just completely sunk into it and was like no I know what I'm signing up for now that I really got invested in the series. So if you're a binge reader I would highly recommend getting through this one. The characters in this series are all also like they're slightly archetypal but not in like a way that's annoying it's just like oh you're that kind of character but then they are also all their own character. No one in this feels like a real, real person. No one feels like they're gonna jump off the page and oh my god, it's like you could be sat right next to me. That, that's not what this story is. That's not its intent. You have characters that are very much like D&D &D characters, but in the best way possible. And it's it brings out the best in fantasy. It brings out that fun campiness. It brings out, Jesus Christ, we, re we read so many miserable fantasies nowadays. Like most of fantasy that is coming out is dark and harrowing and harsh and 
we don't have happy endings and that, that's not what this series is it harkens back to classic fantasy all while still having very modern pacing modern writing modern style characters and i don't mean that in the sense of you have them texting on mobiles i mean in the sense of they have modern values that we can relate to in today's society you have representation of different types of characters not just young virile men and that's it and it was fantastic in that sense having a protagonist that is like caring so much about his wife and not in this i'm not going to listen to you i don't care about you apart from keeping you alive i'm going to be an awful person but i'm doing it in your name and that's not what you want which happens a lot he is just someone who really cares about his wife and it's so relatable like if you are married to someone and you see them suffering you want to do whatever is in your power to help them and i loved that about this story so there were so many things later on we get introduced to so many other characters that are really fun but also have got their baggage and they've been through some shits but it never feels like it bogs you down but at the same time it makes you understand their relationships and overall it was just a really good time the world building in this is very typical fantasy world building because the world building is more about you know like adventuring across the land or you know then later on you've got you know like the keepers and where they all live and you have them like, advising the queen and all these kinds of things like it's not the most innovative world building but again it didn't need to be the whole point of it is actually to take these existing things and metamorphosizing it into something that is new and fresh she didn't create something from nothing she changed an existing thing into her own thing and i really appreciated that but that is it for this review short and sweet because not many people have heard about it i don't want to get into anything that could even be potentially spoilery all i want to do is be like guys this is a really fun time and I think that you'll enjoy it if you like XYZ. And also, if you are a binge reader, definitely highly recommend. But that's it. That's all I'm going to leave you with. So that is everything for this review. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I will hopefully catch you in another one soon. Bye!